talk with us about the topics. So basically how it works is we just kind of do a round table where we just each topic. Yep. So, so I just yes, dish it out to each one of you. So you have to speak up because your voice is kind of low. Can you have me over here? Awesome. This is where everyone's at. This is where the party be at. Yep. I'm getting the podcast set up. Alright. What episode are we on, Jake Ford? Uh, I don't know, I want to see what... Did you make a playlist? I think I did. Yeah, I'll check for you. Yeah, that sounds good. Is I think this is episode... Is this episode 3? Or is it 4? I think it is 3, but let me check. Yeah, I think it's 3. Huh? It's episode right. 3. Alright, it's 3. Sounds good. Gotta turn off my camera because otherwise it doesn't feel like a podcast. Right. And we are live. Did your topic list the notes? You gotta get them notes. Ready. Ready so I heard there's, I heard, oh you're ready now? Okay, cool. Well, welcome everyone. You know, it's another day, another episode of Welcome to the Dark Nerdy, controversial, fun things. So, on today's episode, we got some pretty interesting stuff for you guys. As you guys know, we yep. have, uh, as you guys know, we have two pretty awesome reviews for both Bad Batch and for Mando. So that will be exciting, but then we also got a few other surprises that I think you guys will be pretty happy with. So Jake Ford, would you like to start us with our first topic of the day? I would love to. Um, all right, we're gonna start with uh, Mando and Bad Batch because oh, we saw them last night and they were pretty, pretty dope. So. Uh, uh, so who wants to uh, go we'll first? Go, you want to go I'm first? Gonna pass it to you. I'm going to pass it to you, Joe. You're going to go first. I'm doing good. Oh, okay. All right. So Mando. Um, so this week's episode of Mando was was The Minds of Mandalore, a.k.a. Chapter 18, a.k.a. Episode 2 of the new season. And we had been heard this episode was confirmed to be a banger. And as we talked about in the, in the review, it definitely was a banger. Now, as we know, we, we did enjoy the first episode quite a bit with with the pirates, and you know, it was it was nice to see Mando talk to Bo-Katan and everything, and that was that was good. But here, we are now talking about speaking of Bo-Katan. This episode put Bo-Katan center stage, and we're going to talk about that. So, overall thoughts on this episode? I loved it. Okay, it it felt like classic Clone Wars. It had it had some pretty awesome fight scenes. Um, and there was a pretty big surprise in the Star Wars lore at the end of the episode that I just gotta say, I really love this episode. I I love Katie Sackhoff. She is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars right now, and this episode only made that more and more true. And we learned a couple cool things in this episode. So my final thoughts on this, I'm gonna give this episode of Mando a 9.5 out of 10. I loved it. Um... Are you ready to go next, um, Jacob? Um, Porter. Silvers. Okay. Yeah. Anything you want? Uh, anything you want to add? Um, you give your take okay, on this Mando okay. episode. Well, first of all, to answer somebody in my stream, two hundred thirty-seven. All right. Oh, subs. So, um, I love this episode. It was great. Definitely. Oh shit. Um. Yeah, it definitely was a banger of an episode, and Bogotan is so great in this episode, and yeah, it it it, it definitely was a great episode. All right, is that all you got to add for that, Jake? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, 
Um, next we have Jake Ford's take on the episode. Oh, what about one play? Oh, one play, did you watch Mando? What's up, Andy? Oh, you did watch it? Okay. Yeah, but but it was just still you still enjoyed the episode. That's good to hear. All right, this has been one player's take on the Mando episode. All right, Jake, you're up. Jake Ford. Mr. Ford. <laughs> oh shit! Sorry, I was gonna die. All right. Um, yeah, no, I really liked it. I thought it was um, way more entertaining than the first one. I thought the first first one wasn't yeah, entertaining, but it had a lot a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, yeah, the first one was a good start. This one was liked, kind of more. I like seeing Bo Katan yeah. in action. I think. Yeah, uh, Andy. Um, yeah. Yeah, all those things like there. I mean. I'm not dissing, you know, good guy in her, but he did have to get saved by her like 10 different times in the second episode. Oh, yeah, wow. You know, Damn. If you ever want to you ever wanna know who the better Mandalorian is, I think that's true. Yeah, she just is badass. That yeah. is one of the things that I was mean, great. I mean, yeah. But, yeah, I, no, I, it was... I also, I also, you guys didn't mention this, but I, I have to, I, I really, like, appreciate it. I just, I mean... I thought Grover was so cute in this episode. Like, oh yeah, oh, of course. I mean, he always did. Come around, on. Hovering around in his little pod and kind of like controlling it. Like we never seen that before. And I like how like how mobile. I like how mobile he is in this episode. Like you never really see him go anywhere. Oh well, yeah, they they, they needed need him to do stuff. Not really his own thing. He was told but again, but I like to see that he can do stuff on his own. Um, I agree. I think that worked great. Yeah, but no. Nah, yeah, overall, really good episode. And the seeing the mythosaur at the end, kind of, ooh, goosebumps, you know. Sets you up for the next one, which is always what it's meant to do. Someone's hiding this brush. Oh shit! Yeah, that's great. Well, that's yeah. the thing about these episodes is when you watch them, we're, we're, we're reviewing them as individual episodes from what we've seen of the story. And like, when we watch them all, I'm sure every episode that we see, the next newest episode is always going to be our favorite because it's progressing the story even further. And then, but, but obviously when the season's all done and we've seen all of them, we'll probably have our standouts from which ones we like the best. Yeah, hey, uh, Joe. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can we also can we also discuss at some point during the podcast a specific something that you told me about us about a specific someone showing up in the finale of a specific show? Oh, for Last of Us, yeah, we'll we'll add that at the end. We'll add that as our after we finish our main topics. That's actually going to be our la uh, our last topic. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, did you have that in there? I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, but our last topic is has to do with the Last of Us, so we'll just put it in with that. Good. Okay. Cool um, deal. Alright, uh, who you wanna- Bad Batch Joe, you time? Wanna, I was gonna say, Joe, you wanna start with Bad Batch? Okay, so this might be a hot take. This is something I never thought I would say. As good as Mando was this week, starting off, dude. Don't, don't say it, Joe. Bad Batch, dude. They, they, they won, they won this week. Because, Ooh. because, now here's why, okay? Now, both episodes are good for different reasons, right? But, the fact that they went with such Can't an awesome Joey Mando. I'm not dissing. I feel I like both episodes, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But dude, I'm just and he I just might loves be crosshairs. I just fucking love crosshairs. crosshairs. Okay, I just I was so happy that thank you, Bad Batch creators, not giving us another week of filler nonsense. You you brought back my boy, my beautiful boy that I wanted to see, fucking shit up, and then. Uh, and it just, it was so good because you got to see, we got these new clones, we see the, cl hey, welcome, edit, uh, we get these clones getting treated like shit, and then you see how the Empire just treats people, continuing the Andor trend, you know, the Empire is fucking assholes, and they treat everyone 
below them no matter what. Even people that serve them, they don't, if they're a clone, they're going to treat them badly. And, and we see that in this episode. And that was interesting. And this new lieutenant, to quote the Joker, um, let's just say he gets what he fucking deserves. <laughs> yeah. Like, he literally does. And Crosshair's arc in this episode was great because you go back to Clone Wars when he first appeared, he didn't care nothing about the regular clones. He's like, oh, you're regs. We're the Bad Batch. I'm, I'm here to fuck shit up. I'm doing my shit. I don't care about you guys. I'm doing my shit. But in this episode, he had to change a heart. And, and in the end, he screws over the Empire. But here's the, here's the, the question, guys. Will screwing over the Empire means something very bad for our boys in the Bad Batch? Mm-hmm. Because I have a theory that I think they're going to win a soldier crosshairs. Oh. He was in Mount Tantus um, at the end, and if you guys read your, your legend novels, and as we saw it in the last episode of Bad Batch, this is an ultimate cloning facility. And she was doing some experiments to him, so I'm almost wondering, like, Jake, you remember back in episode 8 and 9 of this season? Yeah. What do you think the chances are that they turn Crosshairs into one of their assassin clones? Like, what happened to the ones that were attacking Rex? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. I think that's... I loved Bad Batch. I'm going to give Bad Batch, uh, entitled Outpost, I'm going to give this episode... I'm going 9.7 out of 10. I think that's a pretty solid score. I'm pretty you know, happy with that. You know, same score you gave I Mando. give Mando 9.5. Yeah. This one gets a 7. Because I love Crosshairs and I'm biased as fuck, but, but I loved the episode as well. I just thought I liked how where they were going with it. I liked seeing new clones. I can see why, why D. Bradley Baker spoke so high about it. You know, it, it makes sense. Okay, um, Jake Ford, or Jake, uh, Silvers, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, I love this episode as well. It was great. Um, just was some, there was just something special about seeing Crosshairs, man. Yeah, it, it, yeah, totally. There was something special about seeing Crosshairs again. And, yeah, it... Preach. Pretty great. One point, we need you back in lobby. <laughs> pretty great. All right. Yeah, alright, so Jake Ford, you're up, uh, cause one player, I'm guessing you didn't watch Bad Batch? Okay. Jake Ooh. Ford, this was your first Bad Batch episode in a long time, so, I'm curious in hearing your thoughts. Um, I don't have a lot of thoughts, I mean. I thought it was a decent episode. You I like Crosshairs, like, so. I do like Crosshairs, but I like, um, I will say it is a little bit filler, but it. It is a good filler? character story. Wow. So yeah. It's not as filler that. as the previous episodes. The, this episode definitely is leading somewhere big. The last... Yeah. If you saw the filler episodes, you would be disgusted. The filler episodes were horrible. Think, they like, were horrible. Like, 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 when, like, like that racing episode? Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. No, but it was... It was good. I like that. I just like where they're taking Crosshair's character. I like that he, that when he met Cody, he's starting to have an arc now. He's not just Mr. Badass, part of the Empire. He's he's got he's got heart. He's got we care about this boy, and he and he seems to care about that that clone. He cared about Mayday, man. Can we get a, can we get a rest in peace in the chat for Mayday, please? Because that was sad, man. We were getting sad. Hey, don't be mean. Hey. <laughs> you liked his armor. No, but anyway, guys, I think we all I would think we all enjoyed both episodes. It was a pretty great Star Wars double feature. We can't wait for more episodes this next week. Thank you, FBE, Rip. Um, but I think we're ready for our next topic. Are, are we not, Mr. Jake? Yeah, Ford? we're ready. Um, all right. We got a lot of talk about King Dynasty because Jeff Luff, Je- blah, blah, blah. sorry, Jeff Loveness. <laughs> blah, blah. Is, Jeff Loveness is talking up a storm right now with uh, fucking Jeff Loveness. You know, I think he should be. You know more a little bit more tight-lipped but um anyway 
we have a few more character confirmations for Kang Dynasty. Um, so we, we saw our lineup and we heard, you know, Namor might be in it. We got two big characters and two characters that, well, maybe one character I didn't really want to see again. Um, I'm just gonna get the bad news out of the way. Sure, he's back as Black Panther. With yep. Do. Yep. Not I surprised. Think, I think I could have gone another movie without her. Um, we didn't need her back again, but whatever. Yelena is back. Uh, not surprising. Although I wonder if we're gonna see it's, the rest of the Thunderbolts. Yeah, it's fine. Um, whatever makes sense. But the two biggest ones that I'm most excited and most nervous about because Jeff Lennis is working on this project is Daredevil and Moon Knight are expected to appear in Kang Dynasty, which makes me very excited, but also mm -hmm. very nervous. We'll start with you, Joe. Oh, let's see. Everybody knows me. These are two of my favorite characters in Marvel, and, well, I'm super stoked that Daredevil and Moon Knight are going to be beating the bitch out of Kang, and I can't wait to see it. I'm also so concerned because I fucking hate Jeff Loveness. I just... I... Uh, yeah. What he did... He did Quantumania dirty, man. He just... The, 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 the writing he did is just... I don't trust him because the way he wrote Kang... I don't want him to write, write my boys the way that they shouldn't be written. And I don't know what he would do. Like, he'll do something stupid, I guarantee it. But I'm just yeah. nervous that he's going to do something even more stupid than he did in Quantumania, and I don't know what it could be, but somehow Jeff Loveness, he'll find a way. Some Something with him, just, I get the feeling that he's going to do something really bad and piss me off. Yeah. So my main topic is, like, am I excited that Moon Knight and Daredevil are going to be in the movie? Hell yes. Am I nervous as hell because Jeff Loveness is writing them? You can <laughs> bet your ass I am. Word. That's my two cents on this one. Um, Alright, uh, one player, you're a Marvel guy. What do you think about this? Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure, definitely. It's not like they don't deserve to be there. Oh, we're going to get with that later. We yeah, have a topic I... about that later for sure. Don't worry. Yeah, that's fair. Hmm. Three to four years, depending if Marvel wants to delay more stuff. But yeah, that's about right. Fair. All right, Silvers, you're up. Um, Moon Knight and Daredevil and Kang Dynasty. How does this make yeah. me feel? This is awesome. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I, I like Joe. I'm a little nervous of the person who's writing it, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, yeah, we're excited for the idea of the character. But we're nervous about the writing, and that's a fair thing to be, especially because we care about these characters so much. It makes sense we'd be a little nervous about it. Yeah. All right. Welcome. Oh yeah, we got some. We got some lots of good stuff. Like I said, Jake Ford's got so many uh, topics for us. Like it's. It's crazy. There, there was there, this week was definitely big news for Marvel. There's a lot of stuff for Marvel. That you don't have enough for that. All right, I think we're ready for our next one. All right. Um, 
Let me take a look here. I'm not trying to get shot. All right. I'm not trying to get shot. So, um, characters who won't be in the movie, Jeff Loveness confirmed this week. Uh, one, the Fantastic Four, which Good. doesn't really surprise me because I think I think they're gonna wait to Secret Wars to do yep. any yep. like some some version of the Fantastic Four, um, and then also Blade, and that also it makes sense, but it also doesn't make sense because by then we'll already we would already have the first Blade movie, and I don't know why he wouldn't be in the movie, but I guess maybe he's doing his own thing. Maybe he's not really considered, you know on the Avengers radar yet, so, uh, maybe they'll do Wesley Snipes and Secret Wars or something like that, I don't know, but, yeah, well, to see, they'll, they'll do something big. Yeah. Uh, we got, I mean, it, we, we, we got a tease of them in the end credit scene for Eternals, but, right, yeah, we mm -hmm. did. And they can, I mean, it's always, it's, it's, we're still very early in the movie's production, so anything can change, you know. Any, anything I bring up today is obviously subject to change, um, because, <clears throat> yeah, anything. Um, it really isn't, you know, a big, you know, this is, you know, huge news, but does anyone have anything to say about Fantastic Four Blade not being in the movie? Yeah. I was kind of hoping they'd do that, but, you know. They could do not, that for Secret Wars. This is just for Dynasty. That's what I, cause that, because, you know, I, I feel like they're saving... We're going to get a lot of characters in King Dynasty, but they're going to save all their eggs for, uh, for Secret Wars. The way that I feel about it is Kang Dynasty is... I don't want to say that a movie is going to be another copy of a movie, but... I have a feeling that Kang Dynasty is definitely going to be like the Infinity War of the Multiverse Saga, where you're going to get... And King... and Secret Wars is going to be the end game. Yeah. Yup. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Eyes and wait for me in there. Definitely got him. Um, what are you doing, bitch? Come on. No. You doing really? Okay, right, Joe? Finally, fucking bitch. Shit, anyway, shit. we're gonna move on yeah. from that because. Uh, so distracted right now. So. Sorry. No. Oh, oh, sorry. You were asking me about uh, my take on the whole. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this whole thing, Fantastic Four, Blade. I mean, yeah, it's fine. We don't need it. I mean, it will happen when it happens. I think we all agree that it, they're saving them up for Secret Wars. Yeah, agreed. And also, the less characters Jeff Loveness touches right now. The better. The better. But, yep. Yeah. It's already bad enough to be doing Blade. Uh, oh, is he writing? Uh, is I he mean, writing sorry, Blade? Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I do. Uh, even see, I mean, I, even I'm getting distracted. Um, it's bad enough he's already got Moon Knight and Daredevil in his hands. We don't need the Fantastic Four too. Yeah, agreed. Too much is too much of a problem. Yeah, exactly. I just hope that if Kang Dynasty has all these characters involved, that they use them in smart ways because, like, okay, they don't want to. I'll say yeah, this. Go ahead. If if Jeff Loveness fucks up, they're never born again. Joe is gonna be pissed. Oh, I hope he's not touching that project. I don't think he's touching the project, but I hope I hope he doesn't undo anything that Daredevil has done that. No serious, because no, 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 yeah. if he does anything to mess up that series. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be a good day for us. Agreed. Uh, definitely not gonna be good. You good on that? Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll get this next one, we have already kind of uh, mostly one player touched on, but um, Jeff Loveness uh, is still 
runs in his mouth about Kang Dynasty. Um, he says he wants to write Kang as the protagonist of Kang Dynasty, and he wants to pit him against Doctor Strange and make Doctor Strange the pr the antagonist, um, which is interesting. Um, I I can see this going a couple ways. I feel like they already kind of did this in Infinity War, but um, Tony really wasn't, I didn't, he didn't really feel like an antagonist. He wasn't always like trying to thwart, you know, Thanos' plans from the beginning. Right. I get that they have they have a template for how they want to do these Marvel villains now, and I feel like once again they're just trying to Thanos Kang, and I don't I feel like you don't need to. I feel like you can kind of give him like he doesn't have to you know view himself as a hero. He can. But the problem with Thanos is they wanted us to care for Thanos. I don't want to care for Kang. I want Kang to just cause massive chaos and destruction. I don't... Everyone in like, Marvel, it's always got to be, Woe is me! Oh, I care about my poor daughter! Oh... Like, I'm so sorry. That, that's what ma that makes that's what makes the villains so iconic, though. Joe. How does it make it iconic? Well, like such a great villain. I mean, what made Thanos a great villain was that he was threatening, not because we cared, we gave a shit that he cared about that's Gamora. That's true. That's true. But if we cared about his backstory, we, we would have. We cared, we cared about him because you know. One, he's he's just obviously a popular character, and so is Kang. But two, like, with you know, they did an interesting thing with Thanos. Uh, they um, kind of. Like, I, 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 I don't want to say they made everybody agree with him, but they made everyone kind of think for a second. That's like, kind of you know, is this say, guy yeah. is he onto something? Is he right? You know, kind of like with Killmonger. I think Killmonger had, Killmonger had a stronger argument, but. Right, that's true. If he's gonna be on, that's, if he's that's gonna be on, I don't know that. Yeah. BS people keep saying about he's come, he will be the Beyonder. I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. It's been confirmed that a Kang variant is the Beyonder. Okay, it's been confirmed, and sure, it's but, you know, it's not. And I think I'm also hearing I think what's gonna end up happening is is that the King, the Conqueror, we see at the end of Quantum Mania is gonna come back out of out of that time thing he's in, and he's gonna become Kang Prime. Which is that the could main happen. Kang. Well, apparently, apparently they want main Kang to be the Beyonder. So, from He's what I'm hearing, Joe. so Marvel, oh. because oh. in in Secret Wars, yeah, because in the in Secret Wars the comic, the Beyonder is the villain. So. Yep. They, that's why they want to probably make Kang of Kang variant the Beyonder because they want Kang to be the villain, but they also want to do something close to the Secret Wars comic. Yeah. I mean, if Feige didn't, it would be an it would be a huge mistake because you can't call a movie Secret Wars and not do what makes it Secret Wars. Like, I don't think they need to include that. I mean, I think the only thing people care about in Secret Wars is just seeing a bunch of, you know, variants of, uh, and and pretty much just seeing almost. 
Right. They could. I, I feel like you can do it, and you can also make it a good story. Cause that's what it made Endgame a good story. I mean, End, Endgame was able to do... Well. If that was true, then Quantum Mania should have got a higher score. And Thor. So, clearly some people have some... Yeah, I guess so. But... What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that Multiverse Mass wasn't a good movie? I'm not saying anything. Yeah, don't say anything, Joe. We anyway. all, we already know your opinion on that movie. Yep, that's why uh, I'm not gonna do it. It starts a war. Joe, so uh, I'm not Joe, what do you, it. Joe? Hey, okay, 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 okay. We're, we're moving on. All right, um, Joe, what do you think about the Kang being the protagonist and Doctor Strange being the antagonist? Mm, this is an interesting um, idea in theory, and I'm curious about the execution of it. But once again, it just proves the theory that I'm not a fan of with Marvel right now. Oh my god. Right, I mean, I feel like if that's what they're going for, I mean, it's an idea and it's interesting. But at the same time, oh, got him. Um, but at the same time, I don't, I just don't like the idea of them making, um, crap. Kang. I don't like the idea of them making Kang a hero. That, that doesn't sit well with me. Um, yeah. so that's my main issue with it. Once again, my main issue that I'm seeing is I don't like that Marvel, the thing about Killmonger that made him great was like, Yes, they were trying to prove a point with him, and yes, they were, tr and yes, he had his way of doing things. But Killmonger, Killmonger didn't want to be seen as a hero, and he didn't, and he didn't need to be seen as a hero. And that's what made him such a good villain, is because he, he was just trying to do. He felt wronged, and he wanted justice, and yeah, and that was what and you I guess need. You can kind of see, you can kind of see that with with. Kind of the conquerors. He kind of, you know, I, I, I could, I could, I could understand. Oh my God! Shut the fuck up! I'm trying to talk. <laughs> I, I could, I could kind of see where he's coming from. Where I, he's understandably mad. I mean, I get what he was doing. He, you know, he was trying to clean up the multiverse. Was he doing it in a great way? No, he wasn't. But yeah. um, hey, Mano. But um, he, I mean, he did get wronged for sure. Um, by yeah. getting ca cast out. And I kind of wanted to see him, you know, come back. I wanted to see him take down his other variants. Unfortunately, Jeff Levinus is an asshole and doesn't know how to write anybody. That's and, true. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think in Kang Dynasty, you're going to definitely see some variants have problems with each other. So I definitely could see him, um, if real Kang does reappear, he definitely might, when he becomes stronger, he's going to make those that he does not like pay for it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, that's actually, that actually, you know what? That leads right into my next topic. Uh, before we get on to that, um, Metal, do you want to join us? Okay. Go ahead. All right. So we're going to, so Metal, uh, we're on Fortnite right now, so if you want to hop on to that. Okay. So you know what we're doing, right? We're doing the podcast, right? Okay. So we're going to, basically how it works, I know you haven't been in this yet, but um, it's just kind of a round table where I dish out the uh, topics and we just go around and say give our opinions, opinions on things yeah oh that's right you were sorry yeah you were okay all right um so anyway anyway um all right so next topic so good segue um jeff loved this uh claims that kang the conqueror is the only one who has what it takes to defeat his other kang variants so kind of like how you what you were saying, Joe, is you know him taking revenge on the people who did him wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, it, again, it sucks to see that he got beat by Ant Man and a bunch of ants because I think he was 
intent intended to be stronger than he is presented in Quantumania, but unfortunately, you know, Marvel just has this horrible, you know, template for making superhero movies and they need the hero to win, right? Because people will be outraged if he doesn't, so Which that's what I hate that we're living in this I know this is and since this is on that topic, I'll say this. I mean, that's kind of what happened with, with Quantumania, though, is, you know, it looked like Ant-Man was about to lose, and then Wasp came out of nowhere, and, of course, she's the savior. She saved Paul Rudd when all looked like... I just don't this, get this why so somebody, stupid. like, if you want your movies to have stakes, why would Peyton Reed make a movie that, like, he wants to have stakes? Somebody needed to either die or stay in the quantum realm. Exactly. Like, that That's what I don't understand. I honestly, like, I honestly you know what, listen, if... If Cassie, which again, I, like by some miracle, I don't know how she's able to create this stuff when she's just a teenager who knows nothing about any of this tech. I mean, what? Because she read a book, but whatever. That's a whole other story. Um, I, uh, if Cassie wasn't able to get the thing like started up and and uh, Hope and Scott were stuck in the yeah, quantum realm, snack. that honestly would have been. I might have liked the movie a little snack. more. I'm like, okay, you know what? They kind of lost because they're still Another stuck in the quantum on... realm. So no, okay. It's, I guess so, but I, I thought I, I'm. I, but from that last topic where we were talking about, you know, Strange being the antagonist, I I, I feel like they should make Strange the the Iron Man of this saga. It just only makes sense because no one knows. Well, the that's what they should have done. No one knows the multiverse better than Doctor Strange, at least in the comics. But clearly, he looked like a complete idiot in Multiverse of Madness. Like stumble around like, oh, there's multiple universes. What? It's it's. Oh, I know, it's frustrating. Would you watch a video about... Lumos. What the fuck? Wait, the first Avengers at 29? My god. Oh, Endgame! Oh my god, that's even... <laughs> oh! Oh, the first one? No, 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 no. Joe, Joe can't even forgive that movie because of how they treated Scott Atkins in that movie. Oh no, we're talking- yeah, the, I, that, that did bother me. That's ridiculous. I mean, Doctor Strange 1, I, I enjoy the movie, but... Come on. Really? Like... Like that, like you like the movie, but that was the one thing in the movie that really pissed you off. Yeah, and no, way, and no way home is like, no way home. Come on, and then end game. Come on. Uh, who put this list out? Oh my god. You think that's bad? I got something that's gonna blow your guys' minds even worse. Okay. Dude, I've had it with fucking IGN today. Did you see their review for, for Mando? IGN should not... They gave it a fucking five. They said that the lighting was, it was dim like Game of Thrones. How about IGN gets a better TV and they won't have lighting problems? Piece of shit. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Like, what the fuck? 
Did, and how dare you? How dare you compare the Mandalorian to Game of Thrones? That's that right there is a red flag. Lumos. Who's munching on them chips, bro? Me. Joe. Sure. I had a snack, so I was hungry, man. All right, are we moving on, or did I mean I don't know? If yeah, I'm ready to move on. Let's... What do you think about this IGN BS? I don't care. I don't even care either. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm just trying to stay on. I'll stay on the topics, but if we're just gonna, you know, <laughs> we're going. Okay, off. we're gonna go on the next topic. We're Sorry, going, it, going a little. One course, player made me think of it when he mentioned his topic. Sorry. Yeah, one player. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Alright, so let's banned. get on to the You're next banned topic. from the podcast. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the next topic. Come um, on. Okay, Move okay, along. Okay. Alright, here we go. Alright, we got a big one, guys. We got we got the big one. John Bernthal is confirmed to come back for Daredevil. Born again. As Punisher. Hey, as, as Punisher, Punisher obviously. Well, all I have to say about this is... I'm just going to say this once, as we start this topic. You uh, hit them, you, you hit them, they get back up. Yeah. I hit them, they stay down. I like that. <laughs> that. That's literally the best way to start this topic. I mean, when I heard this news, I literally almost dropped my phone, because I was like, this can't, what, what we're really talking about this, this is real? Like, come on. Yeah, dude, I mean... It was, I, I was ecstatic. I, I, I and I have something like, to add about this too. That's actually really funny. Did you see that? the? Did you see when John Bernthal confirmed this and putting, and putting the picture from season two of Punisher up on, um, up on Instagram? Who commented no. on it? Was it? Uh, Christian uh, Ritter put the fire flame up and like fire, and I was like, Are, are you really gonna do this? You're really not gonna make it that obvious that you're back too, like. We yeah, know you. <laughs> I I refuse to believe she's not in the show now. Like I, I am convinced that she's in the show now, and they're just hiding we it. We talked about. We brought this up. A, uh, we brought this up a few times, but we I remember that picture that she shared on her Instagram. Yep, with yep. her and Mike Coulter. I mean, you know, let's just say this: she's not being subtle at all. She's being very subtle. I think. About I think she's not. Trying, I was gonna say. I think she's trying to tell us something. What do you think, Joe? Yep. Oh, she's definitely trying to tell us something. She she's being sus about this for sure. But yeah, I would, so let's be, just really... I would be shocked if she was not if she wasn't in. Agreed. The so let's so let's go around to so let's see. We all love John Bernthal's Punisher. My take is this is the, the best Marvel news to come out. Every other Marvel news that you've mentioned in this podcast so far is nothing compared to this. It is nothing. Yeah. This is the best news to come to the MCU, like probably in the longest time. Right. No, now, yeah. the only thing that makes me sad is we're living in an MCU that I don't currently trust, so as much as I'm excited about this news, I'm nervous as hell. Yeah. Like, but you know what? If we get good writers behind the story, I trust them that they'll write. Yeah, as long as we have good writers and it stays violent, we'll be happy. Yeah. Well, the Punisher is not PG-13 character. <laughs> No, he's definitely not. Oh, we'll pass it around. Jake, what do you think? I'm hyped as fuck for this. Oh, like, yeah, oh, it is. Like, this is fucking awesome. I mean, they're filming right now. I wonder how soon till we get set photos of them of them together. Like, you think Oh, my soon? gosh. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so. One player, what about you? What do you think of this? Mm. Oh, so I have that was gonna thoughts be, that was, on this that one. That was going to be my next topic, so I was going to say you, that. Okay. One. I guess we'll segue into that in the next, after we get done with the Punisher thing, because that will be interesting to get into topics on. One player, you, you, keep, spoiling my, you keep spoiling my next topic. He, he's promoting He's promoting your stuff. He's like... I, you know, he's, it's like a trailer before the actual movie. Yeah. Oh, damn good go ahead, trailer. Go ahead, go ahead, Jake. What were you gonna say? Oh, I, I was just gonna say that uh, Joe found that out yesterday, and he was gonna save that for, for next. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. One um, player, ready the fuck up, please. And metal. Ooh. Uh, metal, what, metal, metal, what do you think? What do you, metal, what do you think of this? <laughs> yeah. Aw, oh, dude, Punisher, so excited, man. He, what, what, one, he was one of my favorite characters from the Netflix show, easily, I mean. On a related note, um, where's our Punisher skin in Fortnite, man? Come on. Yeah, dude. Uh, oh, yeah, the movie. movie were all right. The movie was up. Like, yeah, I like, the movie I like was the all right. That first one was pretty good. We're talking about the Thomas Jane one. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas Jane one was pretty good. Um. All right, so. Uh, one player already kind of slowed it, but yeah, Foggy and Karen, the actors, those two people. Uh, not looking good for them. They've been working on that for a while in terms of like DC. Yeah, they've been they've been working on that one. But uh, yeah, back to the Foggy and Karen thing. Um, this isn't too really... surprising to me because um, how do I put this in a, in, a, in a nice way? Um, no one cares about them. I exactly. Why do we just all? Oh, there we go. Um, I was gonna say it's un unready to stop, but yeah. My take on this, and I know this might piss you off, one player. I honestly feel like when they were on the show, they were good support characters where we needed them to be support characters. Yeah. But it needs to be established that this isn't Daredevil season four. This is a new Daredevil show. But well, no, I get, you know, I get but that. You, but you, here's the thing. So here's the way I look at it, okay? This is the way you gotta look at it, okay? So like, I like, the way I see this is, even though we're not getting a Daredevil season you four, you can cast a different it, You can just cast somebody. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but here's I the way they, that I look at it. Like, they didn't need to mention him. I mean, he was. We're all sick of the Spider-Man origin stories by now. Yeah, I feel like the way that the way that this one works is Daredevil was a character because a lot of people know who Daredevil is. They've evolved the character, so he doesn't need he doesn't need to have his little support team of like this doesn't need to be a CW show where we have a little team with our with with, with our people together and we're hanging out in our lair and no. 